Hey guys, Alex with Rapid Fire Rundown. Today, we're going to be discussing a legendary optic. A optic that you see in Call of Duty, video games, movies, television. A incredibly aesthetic looking optic that you will also see on many ARs in the wild. In no small part to the fact that it is such a pop culture optic. Similar to the ACOG. You see them everywhere. Now, is that warranted? Yeah. The EOTech EXPS 3-0 is actually my primary optic on my main weapon system at this time. First of all, the EOTech utilizes a holographic weapon system emitter, or holographic sighting system emitter. I recommend you look into this on your own dime, as my high school education really doesn't qualify me to talk about this subject. Um, it's a lot of lasers bouncing off a lot of different mirrors. Crazy shit. The EOTech EXPS 3-0. On the right, we have the adjustments. These are 0.5 MOA clicks. It's also noted that I have not lost any zero during the filming of uh, any of my shooting or the overall shooting experience with my rifle, and I'm not very nice to my optics. Up here, we have the battery tray. This allows a CR123 battery and provides about a thousand hours of battery life. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's not a lot of power to battery life. My Aimpoint T2 has 50,000 hours at a medium setting. Well, that's another detractor of the EOTech or a lot of holographic sighting systems in general. The battery life is significantly reduced than the likes of Aimpoint. With this optic, it will turn off after eight hours of not being in use if you don't touch any of the buttons on the left. However, just make sure your upkeep on changing batteries, uh, make sure you do it every month or so if you are using this in a duty capacity. Now, on the left, we have the brightness adjustment, up, down, as well as night vision. The EOTech has 20 daylight settings as well as 10 night vision settings. This will flip the optic into night vision only, right? So on the fly, you are able to swap to your preferred night vision setting. This is extremely beneficial. You don't need to fidget with these nearly as much. Um, when you are using a rifle during the daytime and you instead want to do night vision shooting, just press that MV button and it'll put it to your last recorded setting. The settings on the EOTech EXPS3 are actually very nicely spaced apart. And that's really important. When you're looking for a night vision capable device, if your night vision settings are not spaced apart correctly and you don't have a setting for just about every situation, um, it can really detract from the night vision experience. If your reticle is blooming out or if it's too dim, you're not going to be able to shoot very well, are you? Speaking of night vision performance, why is the night vision performance so good on the EOTech? Well, I'd say one large part of it is actually the window size. Now, when we are shooting red dots, remember, we are both eyes open shooting, okay? That's not to say that window size is completely irrelevant, because it is still a conversation to be had. This RMR CC here has a absolutely tiny window, and because of that, if I am not lining up my head perfectly, I am not going to get a good sight picture. Now, when you're under night vision, remember that everything is significantly more difficult. Everything. Breathing under night vision is more difficult, right? The ability to look through your tube and kind of have your tube almost anywhere and get a proper sight picture with zero parallax, which is another huge benefit of the EOTech, is incredibly important. Now, night vision, when you are looking through a EOTech or even like an aimpoint through night vision. It is kind of crazy how you can get a side picture almost anywhere because it's just like a floating reticle in space. Um, it's very cool. I recommend you guys get into night vision. Now, one of the last topics I want to talk about is uh, light transmission. You will notice here that this optic is completely clear. Um, that is another reason why the battery life is so low on these. If EOTech had a notch filter, Similar to this RMR, you see how it's kind of blue? Well, that notch filter, it's actually going to block out certain um, lighting conditions that are unfavorable. If your sun's beating down on you, it's going to block out those, well, I don't know, my high school education is back, but I'm going to say ultraviolet, 
Uh, ultraviolet rays, I don't know. But regardless, the notch filter is both going to block out certain light frequencies as well as it's going to extend the battery life because it doesn't need to spend as much battery creating a aim point bright reticle because you currently, your, your lens is darker. So it needs to project a slightly dimmer lens. Um, that is another reason why the EOTech is such a uh, low battery life contender in the game of um, main primary optics, right? Which is an issue for some people, but like I said, just keep up to date on changing your batteries. And the fact that this does utilize a CR123 battery is awesome. Um, I don't know about you guys, but my red dots having to change my batteries to some extremely fringe watch battery can actually be a deal breaker. The EOTech running off of CR123s, which something like a lot of pistol lights run off of, is a incredible uh, pro favor of the EOTech. All right. So my experience with the EOTech, it's been great. Um, my EOTech has not failed me yet. I haven't lost zero. I do keep this on a Unity riser, which is a video in and of itself, but I've never had a loss of zero. And overall, I extremely enjoy this optic. Um, the last point is because this EOTech is running a holographic reticle, they instead decided to go with the circle dot reticle. The circle dot reticle is... Um, to many people, it can be a hindrance. To many other people, it can be a massive pro. For myself, I enjoy the circle dot reticle because when I am doing holdovers, I'm going to set this to autofocus for you guys so you can see. When I am doing holdovers, my point of aim, point of impact is going to be that center dot at, let's say, 25 yards. That's what my zero is. But this chevron around the reticle, I think it's a 70 MOA ring, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, that is actually a excellent holdover for CQB type shooting. So when you're not shooting at your target at your desired um, zero distance, when you do step up and let's say you're at seven yards, what you can instead do is if you're trying to get headshots on like a body, for example, just put that ring over the head of where your desired POA, POI is going to be. Um, and it's a very nice makeshift holdover. Now, um, it's incredibly important to actually know your holdovers as well as train your holdovers and actually test to see if that ring actually lines up because it may not depending on your zero, but it is at the end of the day still a um, pretty good aspect of the EOTech style reticle. All right, so that's everything you need to know about the EOTech EXPS 3. I highly recommend this optic. It is one of my favorite optics at this time, and I will be continuing to use this into the future. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, squirrels, ideas, please feel free to chime in down below. Subscribe if you enjoy my content. Like this video if you like this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.